over at the table saw and I have my wedgie sled set up to do 12 segments per ring. This should be a real easy glue up, but I'm making it more complicated because I have my blade tilted at 30 degrees off of 90. So not only are the segments a 30 degree wedge, they're tilted 30 degrees this way. So what kind of makes it complicated is I'll be using cherry and walnut, but every other piece is a mirror image of the first cut. So in order to get one ring, I really need to cut enough to make two rings. And that'd be alright because I could use his other rings on another turning which would be a mirror image of the glue up. But I want the slope to go the same way on the turning I'm doing. And I'm going to show you the mirror image and why that happens and then I'll show you how I got around that without wasting hardly any material. I just cut all these segments here on the wedgie sled and I used the normal way of doing it. I put my stock on this side, made the cut put it over here and made the next cut after I bumped it against the stop and back and forth and you do that enough times to have 12 segments and I should have a, a ring that connects. Well in this case because of the angle I put on there it kind of changes things up a little bit. If I was to take this segment which would normally if you had a square cut, a 90 degree cut, that would go together and you could glue it. Well obviously that's not going to go together but every other one, such as 1 and 3, go together, and so does 5. So the, every other cut will go together over here, like this. So those will go together. That lets me slip a different colored wood in here, and like so. So now I can make them like this. Well, I don't want to make... 24 pieces to do it. I just want to make 12. So I've come up with a way to just take a little bit off of one end and still only make 12 and of course I have two different pieces of stock, six from each. So let's get going and I'll show you my little trick on trimming the end and not wasting a lot of wood. I'll go ahead and cut this piece which will be one that I'll be using and I'll bring it back and I'll touch against that block and recut it and that will set it up to have the angles going the direction that I want. Let's go ahead and do that and then I'll continue cutting all the pieces. I have some set aside that are the uh, mirror image of it and I'll see if I can cut more and make a complete ring if I have enough stock. So I'll be back when everything's cut here. So right here I just trimmed the piece off the end so that I'm not making mirror images and that's only about a quarter of an inch. Here's the process of cutting all the segments. I end up making 72 separate segments. After each cut I go back to my little setup block, trim the end so that I'm not making mirror images and I do that 72 times. I have the segments for one ring on this board which is under my glue press. I'm going to do a dry run. I'm using this piece of plexiglass so I can look down and see the joints. This is going to apply even pressure and this is a spacer so I don't have to crank down so far. The idea now is they are spread but I want to see if they'll line themselves up after I put rubber bands on it and then release the pressure and I can see if they fit. Alright, I think you can see that and see that? They just all, you could hear it, they just all snapped pretty much into place. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and glue them. This is how I glued all the rings together and without that piece of plexiglass holding them down they would have just all slipped up and been way out of alignment. Even though this process went pretty well, I wasn't going to know for sure how good a joints I had until I glued them all together and got it on the lathe. So make sure you stick around and see. Here's a better view of the glue press. 
I'll let this one sit for a while. I'll get the other ones glued up and tomorrow we'll start building something out of them. I've got all the rings glued up and I have my Longworth chuck here that I made and the only thing I use it for is for centering rings to glue them in place while it's in the lathe. I'll get this clamp down so it doesn't move. I'll get it flipped around and I'll show you how the rest of this works. So on the back side of this I have a ball bearing arbor fits in the tail stock. What I'm going to do now is just go ahead and get glue on the face of this. I'll put it in here, slide it up and then we'll clamp it up tight. Let it sit until the glue sets up and then we'll do the next ring. The first one will be very easy but the next ones I have to line up the offset of the segments. So let's go ahead and put some glue on it. Okay, I like to give that a little slight twist and clamp it up. See the glue coming out everywhere. So we should have a good joint. Alright, I'm going to let that sit. When the glue is set up, we'll do the next one. And it'll be the same as this, except I need to line up the offset of the segments. So I have the next ring ready to glue into place. This will be a little more involved than the first ring, because I had nothing I needed to line up here. Now I want to line up these joints in the center of that cherry piece. I put a mark on all of them. Then I'll line up the glue joint from this ring onto there and it should give the proper stagger of the joints. So I'll go ahead and get some glue on that, clamp it up. After the glue sets I'll turn this around and do the exact same thing. So I'll show you this one and we'll just go through the next ones a little quicker. But that'll be the exact same procedure. So let me get some glue on there and we'll get it clamped together. Okay, looks pretty good. I'll be back when this one's ready to uh, get a ring glued on it. This is the last ring unless I decide to put an accent ring on the top, but I wasn't going to, so I'm still not sure. I've got all the rings glued in place, and if you'll notice that all those angles are going this direction. And in the beginning I said when you use a wedgie sled and cut the pieces the way you usually do, because of this angle, it would have made a mirror image every other piece. That's what it would have looked like. I would have had every other ring going this direction, and I actually wanted them all to go the same way. So let's go ahead and get this ready and turn a shape on it. So last night I went ahead and glued a paduk ring on here. If I decide I don't like it, I can turn it off. But now I'm starting to think I want it on there. So it's probably sat for 18 hours. I'm going to go ahead and turn these flat spots off and then have a look at the design. I'm thinking it might look better somewhat flat and not a lot of curves in it, but I don't know. I'm going to start with a half inch bowl gouge, about 1100 RPM, as soon as I grab my face shield.
Okay, that sounds pretty interesting. Let's get some more to clean up here. So I'll go ahead and get that done and then we'll think about the inside and see what I have for a wall. Not too bad, the joints were decent. Very difficult glue up, I don't recommend it at all. I just wanted to try it, but it is interesting. All right, I will go ahead and get set up to clean up the inside. I'm set up to do the inside now and I'll just follow the gentle curve I have on the outside and it shouldn't take too much to do that and I'll try to get you a better view once we get going. Half inch bowl gouge and we're turning about a 1100 RPM. You can probably notice here the rim is a little thinner than what it was a few seconds ago. That's because when I thought I was pretty much done and I stopped, I noticed one of the segments had not cleaned up on the paduk. So I grabbed my negative rick scraper thinking I would just take a little bit to get it off. Well, the next thing you know it was down to this size, but I like it this way anyways. I've got the inside pretty good on the walls. The bottoms a little bit rough, so I'm going to use 80 grit, get that sanded up, and we'll sand the walls here, and, and then we'll sand the outside, and that's pretty smooth, so I'll probably start with 120 on it. Okay, that's getting nice and flat. And I'll sand the inside with just sheets of paper because I really can't get that in there without digging in. And that's pretty smooth now. So I'll put a 120 grit and show you what we're doing on the outside with the lathe spinning in reverse at around 400 RPM. Get that rim like that. So it'll be pretty easy sanding and I'll, I'll be back after we get to 400 and we'll get a finish on it. I've got it sanded to 400 and I'm going to use the depth gloss on it. And because I have that paduke, I'll do a light dusting in that area first because paduke will bleed. And then we'll come back and spray it a little heavier. I got two dustings of the lacquer on it and I think we're ready to go ahead and put a little heavier coat on it now. I 
I'll do the inside and I think we'll just, I'll show you the outside because the inside's hard to see. I got four coats of lacquer on it last night. I'm going over it with 400 grit sandpaper to prepare it for polishing. And this is actually very smooth. I'll wipe that off. I'm going to go over it with the white Scotch-Brite. So that's uh, actually a very good finish right there. It's got a nice shine to it and it's nice and nice and smooth. But let's go ahead and use some Axe Abrasive Paste on it. And I am running the lathe in reverse. And now I'm around 400 RPM. Turn it up more like about 600 and we can go a little more. I do have a video showing how I use the abrasive paste and polish. And I'll put a link in the description for that if you haven't seen it. I just wiped a coat of the Axe Polish Restoring Paste on there and I can tell you this is really going to be pretty. But uh, Check that link out on how I do the abrasive paste and polished paste. It'll be a lot more information than what we're doing here. Now as soon as I get this buffed out and do the inside, we're pretty much done because I have a recess on here, nothing to cut off. So I'll be back shortly and show you exactly what we have. Well here it is. And I have been wanting to try segments with an angled joint for the longest time and I'm sure glad I did. And I'm sure glad I picked the wood that I did. Look at the chatoyance in this. It's just amazing. It's got walnut and cherry for the segments. And I got paduke on the top and paduk on the bottom. I think it looks great. And so does the inside. It finished five and three quarter in diameter. It's three and three quarters tall and the base is three and three quarters. And the walls are about a quarter inch. So I used about four, maybe five coats of Def Lacquer sprayed on it. And I actually didn't sand it until the end. It went on so nice. And I sanded it with 400 grit sandpaper. And then I used the white scotch Brite on it. And I used Axe Abrasive and Polish. And that's why we have such a lovely shine. And all that chatoyance really shows up. So these segments, I knew they'd be kind of tricky to glue together and tricky to cut. So if you feel that something like this is outside of your capabilities, please don't even try it. Just make them straight up and down and you'll make a beautiful bowl just like this. It would look just as well straight up and down. It's just something I wanted to try and I did. So I'm really happy with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment, I read them all, and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex, so let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, See you later.